This is the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. Here's Robert Kiyosaki. Hello, hello, hello. Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show. And we have sitting in for me today, Ken McElroy. And he's at the Rich Dad office. And this is the inaugural show from my home office at my house, which is about 10 miles away from my office. So anyway, this is your first time working out the bugs. But this is part of our series. It's called, What Do You See in 23? And Ken is my first guest here because just before 2008, I mean, Kenny and I were licking our chops because it was a real estate bubble supreme. It was a subprime thing. Everybody was flipping houses and doing all this. And we knew this we, in 2008, we knew a crash was coming. And it turned out to be one giant crash. And Kenny would always do this. He says, man, I would go make a lot of money. And the reason for this, sh- this program, what do you see in 23, is this, I suspect this crash is going to be different than 2003, uh, 2008. So I'm bringing Kenny. I mean, Kenny and I made fortunes because <clears throat> after the subprime market crash again in 2008, the Fed dropped interest rates like this. Our debt went like this. And now in 2023, we're screwed. So the whole dem- the whole ecosystem has changed. We have a crime in Biden, the Biden crime family in charge. I mean, he stands in front of the television and he says, yeah, he went to see the border. And Ken and I live on the border. And I tell you what, we've been to the border more times than Biden has. I don't think he's ever been there. But he stands around and lies and he says he's been to the border. And so this economy is very, very different because, you know, Kenny and I, we're good friends with Donald Trump and his family, the two boys, Don Jr. and Eric Trump. And Kenny and I have hunted with them. They're great young men, fantastic young men. And you combine that to Hunter Biden, who's this deviant drug dealing son of a, you know what? And this economy is different. So I'll welcome back Kenny McElroy. We have made fortunes together, but that was in 20, 2008. It came like this because interest rates came like this but interest rates are going up like this. And we have a psychopath at the helm of the U S government. So welcome to the rich dad radio show. Kenny, you look good in my seat there. Yeah. Thanks. It's it's great to be here. I, I, you know, uh, in your studio. So thanks. Yeah. You hear that you're, you're, you're launch number one, which is perfect. So I have a question. Um, in that saying it's different this time. Do you concur or not concur that this crash is going to be different than 2008 for real estate specifically? Well, there's a couple of things. One, have the sentiment, the, the people out there believe, you know, so th- that's the same. So in other words, you know, uh, everybody just got through this 10 year run and they're, you know, they're they're They believe next year is going to be better. So just like, you know, wait, when you were talking about earlier. So that's the same people, you, you know, when when guys like you and I come out and say, you know, this is going to be a rough patch um, could be even worse everybody's saying that's not true. That's not true. That's not true. So it's kind of the same. That's the same, but I, I agree with you. There's a lot of things that are very different this time around. And, um, you know, uh, you know, people are in a lot worse situation. I believe we're, you know, I, I just did a video this week on YouTube. There's over 300,000 people already underwater on their mortgages, um, that bought in 2022 already. So, that's out on 300,000. Yeah. 300,000. That's out on a Yahoo article. Just Google it. So, you, you know, it's starting Robert, as you, as you said. So th- that's another thing too. I mean, Kenny is the author of great books called ABCs of real estate and property management, which is the key to real estate. You can't manage property, get out. And number three is the advanced guide to the finance of real estate. And uh, what Kenny has always said, the key to real estate is jobs. And this time, you know, not only interest rates came down after 2008, interest rates are going up this time in 2023. And we're going to have massive unemployment. You look look at, um, I forget, 
Meta or Facebook, or those, they're laying off thousands and thousands and thousands of workers. So it's not only interest rates going this way, it's unemployment going this way too. And would you agree with that, Kenny? If you don't have jobs, that crushes real estate. Yeah, I always tell people, you know, real estate exists for people, like period. Like you have to have people for it to work. It doesn't really matter what it is, an office building, retail, shopping center, apartments, you know, houses. If there's no people and they can't afford it, then, you know, real estate's going to suffer. And that's where we're heading next. Right. So when they dropped interest rates after 2008, people were flush with cash because they could afford to flip and do all those goofy things. Then they could afford to go shopping. So you, you mentioned one of my favorite subjects is shopping centers. You know, I, I think they're going to be turned into apartment houses eventually because if he keeps crushing retail plus restaurants, plus his commercial. I'm looking that's, at one, it's, actually. It's, I'm actually literally looking at a shopping center right now that's lost the anchor. Um, you know, some of the tenants that are in there are, you know, struggling obviously because you need an anchor uh, in order to draw people to those and so we're ross and i are looking at one right now that we would basically uh, demolish and then put uh multi-family on you'll put apartment houses on it yeah of course yeah so same thing you know you know what happens in these cycles you know different kinds of uh, real estate gets repurposed as you know so um you know, I'm, and we're looking at several corners around Phoenix and Tucson right now uh, where, you, you know, that's already happening. The, the 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 online retailer, you know, like, I don't know about you, but there's been 50 Amazon packages to my house in the last two, three days, right? Because obviously it's Christmas time around that time. But the point is people aren't doing the bricks and mortar anymore and it's really starting to show up. And and so when when those stores start to close, then, you know, the other little guys that are in those uh, um, centers start to close. And then, you know, and that's when you start to repurpose those corners. Yeah. And there's one big difference about Kenny and the average investor out there. I mean, you got to start in property management, didn't you? Yeah, I, I got that was, you know, hindsight is really, really I was really fortunate where I, I started in the business by understanding the financial part of the business. You know, like if you don't have enough rent to pay your expenses, you lose the property, you know, or if your expenses are too high, you know, or your debt cost of debt, which is kind of the big issue right now. So all of those things came, you know, I learned through property management, uh, through managing hundreds and hundreds of properties. And, and so yeah. when I finally got the courage to, to buy them, I understood it operationally. Right. And the good, the great thing about Kenny, your partner came from the savings and loan industry, right? Ross. Yeah. Ross. Yeah. Ross was a, the, at the time, the youngest, I don't know if this is a good thing, but he was the youngest president or sa of a savings loan in the country. Uh, I think it was Sandia savings in New Mexico, um, you know, right out of college. And so he learned how people were getting loans and, you know, um, you know, the process. And so when 08 came, Robert, you know, Ross is like, Hey, this is not good. Like these people, they can fog a mirror, but they can't pay the loan back, you know? So like, right. you know, it was not a good thing. So that's, as you know, you just look at that. That's kind of a, a red flag when they right. when they're giving them away money like that. So I want to explain to everybody, one of the reasons Kenny is so successful, he's a professional in the business, but he started in property management. And property management is where the money is made or lost right in there. Plus, his partner comes from the finance side, the savings alone, which are all gone today. And uh, that's a secret to his success. And again, I just want to reiterate this. In 2008, when everybody was out there buying houses they couldn't afford, they had ninja loans, no income, no job. Kenny was doing this. He says, the idiots are in the market and they're going to lose their houses soon. It was going to bring the whole market down in 2008. And when it came down, Bernanke, I mean, Matt Bernanke got a Nobel Prize. Can you imagine that? One of the biggest criminal Fed, Fed, Fed chairman. He gets a Nobel Prize for that. So now the whole economy is in this massive, massive bubble. And then this the new new Fed chairman Powell is raising interest rates. So this is not 2008. This is 2023, and that's the reason for this show. What do you see in 23? So Kenny, not too many guys are going to take down a shopping center and put up a high rise. But for the average mom and pop person, what do you see for them? 
Well, we've already seen, you know, significant drops in residential, commercial, all, all you know, already in the last six months. So, you know, we own 10,000 units. So, you know, we have a very active pipeline with acquisition people and analysts. And so every single week, I'm looking at, you know, four to eight deals every week, all over Texas, Arizona. So, so I am in touch with the markets. I know what brokers are doing. I know what sellers are doing. We know what the capital markets are doing. And, you know, and then we also have 68 million in renovations going on in our 10,000 apartments. So, so I understand the supply issues and the labor issues and all that kind of stuff. So we already are seeing, well, I did a video called pencils down. You know, I said, Hey, time to put your pencils down and just let the fed do their thing. And because what I'm trying to do, Robert, is I'm, I'm trying to get the sellers to adjust their expectations. There's a big difference between the bid and the ask right now between what I'm willing to pay and what the seller is willing to do. But I have all the leverage. I hold all the cards. Okay, so let me ask this question. Okay, so let's say I'm uh, Johnny late to the party. I started buying property because they read your book. The ABCs are real estate, the real estate, and then the property management and the advanced guide to real estate investing. Please get those books because they're more applicable today. They're Ken McElroy's books. They're more important today because this time it is different. So let's let's talk about, let's say I'm mom and pop. We got the real estate bug because what, what scares me, Kenny, is I go around town. People, oh, I took, I did what you said. I bought real estate. I said, yeah, that was a while ago. So let's say they bought a property in 2020 because it's 2022 right now. And they're upside down. I mean, they, the house, so let's say they bought it at 100,000, it's now 200,000 and coming down. They still have a job, which is key to the whole thing. So let's have a property I paid 200,000 for, it's now on its way past 100. What would you say to that person? Well, the the main thing is the cash flow. You know, we always talk about this. You built a game around it. The principles in cash flow are exactly what people should be studying. So I always, by the way, I bought real estate in 05 and the value went down. But what saved me was the cash flow during those rough years. So, so if they can figure out a way to cover their expenses and their mortgage payment, hold on, you know, because obviously you have to write a check to get out of something like that. So, you know, that's the number one thing. And I think what people don't realize is that at the end of the day, the tenants, they pay, you know, they pay your house off. So they're the, they're gold. And and so you have to treat them well, you have to take care of them and, um, and then just ride it out. Cause I've been through this and, and you know, what saved my butt was my tenants and managing a property well and keeping the occupancies high. If they don't have, you know, that, um, let's say, uh, you know, and they're hemorrhaging seriously. I know a lot of people that bought Airbnb, you know, and I was like, you should never just buy a home to Airbnb. It, it you know, it needs to work like as a long-term rental. And then, uh, for those who may not know this is Hawaii is a tourist industry and all the hotels and all the guys that are in a Airbnb, they got the government to outlaw Airbnbs in Hawaii and it crushed that business. Yep. And just the other day, our, well, we have a, Kenny and I have a common friend. I talked to his son and says, oh, I just bought an Air, I, I bought a condo for an Airbnb in Tucson. I said, holy mackerel, Tarzan, you, you, you know, you, you're a little bit too late to the market. And he's all excited. And um, what do you say to people like that? I mean, let's say they're upside down. Let's say they pay 200 and it's 100 and they're losing money, they can't get enough tenants. How does a person get out of that? The, the, there's only one way. And I mean, you gotta pay somehow, some way. And so you have to be scrappy and figure out how to cover your expenses. And if you can't, then you're gonna lose the property and you're gonna lose your equity. And, and, and so that's what I see next is a lot of, you know, Airbnbs, I don't know if you know, is really down. So. Um, you know, so those people that, you know, their expenses were seven, eight grand a month, let's say that I mean, basically the same thing you do when you're, you're in a seat on a plane that's crashing, there's not a lot you can do unless you're cash flowing. I mean, that's it. You, you know, you have to but figure what, out a way. Is the, you know, your, your next book should be the ABCs of foreclosure. Yeah. <laughs> 
Right. What, so what would you recommend to mom and pop again in the house they pay 200 for in 2020? It's now 100. They can't find tenants because, because you know, when the tenant, when the people lose their jobs, they stop renting too. Well, they, they you, have, you have to evict them some of the times. It's a whole yeah. different market is what we're saying here. What yeah. does that person do? There's not a lot of choices, honestly, Robert. I mean, the the bank's going to want their mortgage. Just like if you stop paying your car loan, you know, they're going to come foreclose it. That's just the bottom line. So you have to figure out a way through side hustle or whatever, because, you know, not only do would you have to pay that back. So let's say it is a 200 to 100, which is, you know, that's the extreme right now. It's at least 20 percent off, let's say. But regardless, you know, if the bank takes that back, you actually get a tax bill. You know, if they have a write down, you actually get a tax bill for that, too. So it's not as simple as just walking away. And um, you got to fight like heck to to figure out how to cover that, how to get that thing and and write it through. And I, I'm, I this happened to me in 05, 06 and 07. You know, Ross and I scrambled and we just tried to figure out, you know, how do we just cover our expenses and our debt? And, and um, you know, there wasn't a tremendous amount of cash flow, but we were just super concerned about, um, you know, keeping the properties that we have. And, uh, and this is the entire point of, you know, reserves and cash being, you know, you got to have reserves and you got to have cash. I know a lot of investors distribute all their money and go buy crap, you know, and, and they don't have any kind of reserves. And, and so they don't, any kind of a uptick like, a, like interest rates, you know, can, can wipe out some of their cash flow very quickly, which is exactly what's happening. This debt is killing a lot of people, anybody who had bridge loans, variables, uh, adjustable rates, all that stuff, you know, their mortgage payments are, are killing their cash flow. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons that Kim and I, you know, partner with Kenny, because the moment you start going past two and three units, the key again is the property, the management, and the financing. Those are the three parts that make put it together. So, um, Again, this is the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. So back in 2008, the bad news was real estate market was crashing. The good news was the Fed was dropping interest rates. So it was like hog's heaven. I mean, we, we creamed it. Right? It'll happen again, too. Okay, so this time is 2023. Real estate is crashing from a bubble. Big, again, 2008 was a bubble. But instead of dropping interest rates, the Fed keeps raising interest rates. So if you haven't fixed your interest rate, you're in serious trouble, right? Without a doubt. You know, with Robert, you think about this. The Fed or the inflation rate was 9.1 in June. So now it's 7.1. So they've raised rates six times and it's gone down 2%. Now there is a lag effect, of course, but it hasn't really moved much, 2%, and they've they've jacked rates. And so what's happened is, you know, the all the real estate, uh, um, you know, is, is being repriced right now, and it will be repriced next year. And there's no way that the Fed's going to be under, let's say, four in on inflation by the end of next year. In my opinion, there's no way. Yeah. And so, you know, the, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the tagline is always the good news and bad news about money. And personally, I um, hate to be pessimistic, but this is one of the worst things I've ever seen. Do you know what I mean? Even in, um, I wrote that book with Ted Sedell, Who Stole My Pension? And if you, you pay any attention, what happened in England is when they, when they screwed around there, the first thing that popped up, their pensions were broke. And what Americans are going to find out, their pensions are looted. There's nothing in them. So it's, this is almost a perfect storm because it's my generation, the boomer generation, their biggest asset, they say, is our house. And in Rich Dad Poor Dad, I say, your house is not an asset. And on top of that, they're planning a retirement, so their 401k is crashing, or IRA is crashing. And if you have a police pension or a teacher's union pension, it's been looted. I mean, I hate to be so pessimistic, but I've never, you know, I mean, Kenny and I have talked about this for years. The perfect storm is coming, and I think it's 2023. So when we come back, I want to go into what the good news is. And if we don't come back, you'll know there's no good news. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's, always, there's, there's a yin and a yang. There's a positive and negative. And 
So can I get prepared? I want you to give your forecast for 2023. We've given everybody the, um, the bad news. Some people are now on suicide watch. And uh, the question is, when we come back, what can a person do? In my opinion, is going to be the worst economy any of our generation has ever seen. That's my opinion, and I hope I'm wrong. But I'll, I want you to be prepared, Kenny, to say, let's say I'm right and I'm the biggest pessimist on earth, and I'm right. How does Kenny McElroy prepare for 2023? Okay. Yep. So, so we come back. We'll come right back again with Rich Dad Radio Show. Hey everyone, it's Sarah at the Rich Dad Radio Show. Let me tell you, good sleep is the ultimate game changer and the 8 Sleep Pod is the ultimate sleep machine. I live in Arizona. It's over 100 degrees today and it's only expected to get hotter throughout the week. And the pod is the only sleep technology that dynamically cools and heats each side of the bed to maintain the optimal sleeping temperature for what your body needs. With the pod, you can start sleeping as cool as 55 degrees Fahrenheit or as hot as 110 degrees Fahrenheit. And clinical data shows that eight sleep users experience up to 19% increase in recovery, up to 32% improvement in sleep quality, and up to 34% more deep sleep. And 8Sleep recently just launched the next generation of the pod. The new Pod 3 enables more accurate sleep and health tracking with double the amount of sensors, delivering you the best sleep experience on Earth. And all you need to do is go to 8sleep.com slash richdad to start sleeping cool this summer and save up to $150 on the pod. 8Sleep currently ships within the USA, Canada, the UK, select countries in the EU and Australia. Feeling powerless over current events and your financial future? Financial freedom is your freedom. Robert Kiyosaki is the best-selling author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Over 40 million people have taken Robert's advice. Now it's your turn. Attend Robert's free virtual wealth building event. Claim your free access now at richdadfree.com. Don't wait. Access is limited. Go to richdadfree.com. That's richdadfree.com. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, and you can check us out and all this. All of our all of our programs are archived at richdad.com. And the reason we archive them is because one of the ways one of the ways we learn is by repetition. So if you if you watch this program and you hear it once, listen to it again, you'll pick up even more. That's how we learn. It's like you don't learn to play golf, hitting the golf ball once. And when you listen to it again, you'll pick up even more. But more importantly, share this with friends and families and that idiot brother-in-law of yours or something, whatever like that, listen to it and discuss it. Because when you discuss it with other people, your intelligence increases. So our guest today is my business partner, Kenny McElroy. We have made freaking fortunes in real estate. And as we talked about earlier in the show, <clears throat> when we saw 2008 and subprime coming o- over, I remember we had, uh, Ken, I, I had an assistant and she ran, this is prior to 2008, she ran down to one of the worst neighborhoods in town and she bought a house that she couldn't afford because her thoughts were real estate always goes up in value. And I had to, oh, she and I got into a fist fight almost because she was so sure that that house was going to make her rich. And thank God, you know, her, I got through to her and she didn't buy it because right after that, the 2008 market crashed. And so let me reiterate again, <clears throat> the good news for Kenny and I when we saw that, you know, real estate prices were coming down, but interest rates were coming down. Today, interest rates are really high. I mean, real estate prices are really high, but interest rates are going up because they're trying to stop the bubble. And that's why I say, you know, they gave Ben Bernanke, who was the Fed chairman back then, the Nobel Prize for putting up one of the biggest financial bubbles in world history. So as we promised at the Rich Dad Show, it's good news and bad news. But right now, you know, <clears throat> for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So, Kenny, what opportunities do you say for the mom-and-pop investor? And hopefully they're not underwater. Hopefully they call their attorney if they are and get out of it, you know, handle their bankruptcy or whatever they have to handle professionally. You know? Yeah. Well, what, I, what do you rec- what do you see the good news is that's the question yeah uh, well there's quite a bit actually I, uh, first of all you can make money 
in either direction, right? Up so and down. That's the important thing to understand. And most people don't understand how to make money when things are going down. So, you know, that's what we'll turn next. So there's no question that uh, prices are going down. There's no question that commercial and residential is going down. There's no question that interest rates are up and cap rates are up and values are down. So that's clear. And those are facts. So what what I've been telling everybody and what we're doing, Robert, as you know, is, you know, we are um, hoarding cash right now. And that's the first thing. So so we're, we are accumulating cash to get ready because you you as you know, you don't really learn a lot. In fact, I don't think you learn hardly anything when when the market is going up. All, all, right. you, know, you, you think you're smart. So what's really fun is is understanding what's going on when the market's going down. And, 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 you know, and this is the time that we're already seeing this. We're already seeing, you know, people that are stressed, um, you know, because let's say there's a couple things. One is if you have any kind of defined exit in 2023, and what I mean by that is a loan maturity, that's a defined exit. So if you have a loan that's maturing in 2023, you're in trouble because, you know, guarantee your loan rate, your interest rate is lower than it's going to be. So those people are listing. If you have an equity partner that wants their money back or you have anything that's a defined exit for 2023, those are targets. You know, those are our targets. You know, we want though we want to go after those people. Oh, you want to talk to the person that's being squeezed by the advice. Yes, correct. Okay. Right. So those are those are opportunities. The other um is if you bought anything last year where it was a variable rate, let's say like a home that's under construction, it could be a spec, could be one home, you know, that somebody thought was going to be, you know, we're going to build a $500,000 home, let's say. Well, guarantee their costs are not 500. You know, if they started a year ago, they're over 500. That's for sure because of the supply costs and labor costs and all that. And the construction loans on all any deal, the construction loan is a floating rate debt because there's no asset. You know, when you have land, there's no collateral. So those construction loans are always floaters or they're variable or bridge or whatever you want to call. Them. So they, the construction costs for that spec builder, um, you know, their lines of credit, they're way high. So, so you, you, they're getting squeezed by costs of the actual real estate itself and the costs of the debt. So you're going to see, in my opinion, a lot of uh, home builders making massive, massive deals next year. And, you know, because they, they um, you know, those two things have gotten out of hand. I, I, the reason I know this, we have six apartment projects under construction right now. So, you know, uh, over a hundred million in, in construction. And, and so, we're dealing with labor costs, supply costs, concrete costs, you know, for, uh, lumber costs, you know, drywall, all that kind of stuff, and the labor associated with and our construction interest. So this is speaking from experience. And so all of this is happening right now. So anybody who has any kind of variable loan, even on a rental, you know, let's say they bought a four unit building and they have a rental there, you're not going to have a fixed rate debt. So those are massive opportunities because those sellers they're gonna they're gonna play it cool. They're gonna go, oh yeah, we're gonna try to sell this four unit. And meanwhile, tick tick tick, you know their their costs are going up. So, you know we're we're watching all of these deals. I, I looked at one uh, yesterday in San Antonio where the guys were fifty percent occupied and they had a heart. They had a they had a, a institutional equity that wanted their money back. So. Obviously, that's you know. I'm like, okay, let's roll. Let's see what we can get this thing for, you know. And and um, the the problem is, you got to be careful. You don't want to catch a falling knife, you know, because the value still could go down, and you're going to step into somebody else's risk. So we passed on that one because I don't want to. I'm like, well, you had it for two years. How can you only be 50 percent occupied? There must be some other issue. So, um, you know, but those deals are starting to surface. Correct. And my first real estate deal ever, this is way back in the dark ages, was a real estate developer who couldn't sell. And this was beachfront in Maui on the island of Hawaii. You know, it's the prime property. And the developer was so desperate to sell. You know, I basically offered to just take him out and he financed it, seller financed it. And I, and I paid him with a credit card. 
That was my first deal. And and I and again, as you said earlier, then the problem with that is when you're successful, you think you're Donald Trump or something. Oh, yeah. You got to believe your own BS. Yeah. You got to be careful of that. Yeah, it went to my head, and I started looking for all these deals. But what happened was I got greedy, and I stopped analyzing them as close. You know, the first deal was really tight on my analytics: beachfront Maui, all this crap. It's eighteen thousand dollars. Again, my credit card for. $2,000 down. That was it. I was in. I made 25 bucks a month and I was Donald Trump. So exactly as Kenny says, the problem is in a boom market, you think you're smart. Everybody thinks they are. But when the market crashes, kind of the good news is I think people come to their senses. They smell the coffee and they're more willing to negotiate. Is basically what you're saying? Yeah. And, and you know, to- it depends, you know, like uh, I, I laugh because there's still these young guys like, you know, 10 years, uh, 10 years of, you know, guys, of you know, if, if you're yeah. in your mid thirties, you know, you're in trouble. Like, I'm telling, you know, because like, like, you're not going to listen to guys like us. And so, you know, you're just going to raise that next fund, buy that next deal. You know, you, you know, you're, 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 you know, your head is down and you think tomorrow's going to be better than last. And I'm telling yeah. you, we're all, you know, there's no way with interest rates now in the sixes and sevens that, you, you know, you projected that a year ago. There's no flipping way. You, you know, yeah. your interest rates are higher. Your labor costs are higher. You, you know, any renovation or construction costs are higher. Those are facts. There's no way that you beat the market in those three things. So, you know, and I just laugh because I see they're putting new funds out and they're raising more money and they're doing all this stuff. And people are, you know, uh, you can believe whatever, you can put whatever you want on a business plan and raise money. As we know, Robert, that can happen. Yeah. When I was a kid, they said, don't trust anybody over 30. Now that, now that I'm 75, I don't trust anybody under 30 yeah. <laughs> because, you know, they were raising the economy of buy the dip, the feds got your back, you know, just keep buy, hold, pray and all that stuff. And I, I see these younger guys on YouTube and all this, and we know some, a lot of them, they're just saying, don't worry, the market will bounce back, you know, buy the dips and all this. And the reason, let me give it again, the, this economy is different. Again, interest rates are going up this time. Um, prices are coming down, but unemployment is going up. And the key is always unemployment. Or as we say, you know, if your neighbor loses your job, their job, it's a recession. If you lose your job, it's a depression. And so that's why I would, uh, if you're in trouble, I would hire an attorney to guide you out of the mess. Don't ruin your future by defaulting or all the other stuff, but there's going to be a lot more opportunity. So what, what else would you say to be a, a person, any person, young or old, depending on the situation, are they caught with their pants down or are you just getting started? Well, what are the opportunities? I think if this is a nine inning game, Robert, we're in the second or third inning. I really believe that I, I you know, next year we'll be in five or six. Um, I still think, we're going to have high inflation through the end of next year. I think the Fed's going to raise rates all year, not as aggressive, you know, quarter point, half a point. And, you know, we've been here before. In in 07, the federal funds rate was 5.25. Right now it's 4.25. So, you know what I mean? And that's right before the last crash. So you can see the federal funds rate got raised Right before that, I, I was investing during that time, Ross and I, but, you know, the key was you can still buy today, by the way. It just needs a cash flow, period. So if you can pay 7% on something and you have cash flow, and then knock yourself out. The issue is people are banking on it being worth more and they're exiting without the fundamentals, you know, that you guys teach in your cash flow game. You know, that it's it all boils right down to that. All right. So, uh, you know, don't definitely don't buy the dips. And uh, this time it's different and it really is different right now. So I'm, I'm, I feel for younger people right now because a lot of them can't afford a home because they're still living at home or whatever the case may be. Well, they're chasing, I, you know, they're also chasing these crypto, you know, FTX is kind of the big thing in the market. You know, right. I don't know if you saw this week, 
you know, they're going after these YouTube influencers. And, you know, there's a $110 million lawsuit that came out last week. They're going right after them. I mean, you just, just go take a look. I don't want to mention any names, but, you know, I've been watching this. And, you know, these, these are 30-year-old plus. They don't have the experience of a down market. And so, right. you, you know... You know, I never, we had FTX come to me to advertise on my channel. I said, no, I don't understand like how this works, you know, because the asset, as we know, the asset pays the return, period. It always does. So, yeah. and and so I'm like, where's the asset? You know, like, I don't understand. So um, anyway, so that's all happening now. So you just got to be careful on who you're taking your advice from. And, you know, how experienced they are. And and I think that's going to start, to, that's going to be the big story for 2023. Yeah. The other, the other thing, too, is that people are going to lose their homes. You know, they, they may have a mortgage on this. So, in other words, a homeowner is going to become a renter. Do you see that as an, I mean, it's bad news, unfortunately. But it's, you know, as you and I have often joked about in the side, if they stop, you know, we have a lot of what they call low income, affordable income housing for the working class person. And unfortunately for that person, the next stop, next stop is a street. So if they can't pay their rent on a low rent income property that Kenny and I own, then they're homeless. So what's happening now is the white collar guy, let's say they're 65 years old, they're losing their house, they're losing their pension. You know, and they're going to be moving into a rental unit. Is that a market, possibly or not? Yeah. Well, there's, of course, there's a couple of things going on there. One, if you own a home and you bought it two years ago and you got a three or four percent mortgage, you're not listing it. You know, because there's no way you can't even buy the same home in the same neighborhood, um, and you know your mortgage payment is you know significantly higher. So there's a lot of people that are going to stay put for a long period of time, and that's going to hurt the market. The other one is um, if somebody's trying to buy something, to your point, it's going to force them into rental, you know, because the mortgage payment is significantly higher. So they're going to have to turn to rental because one, they got to come up with more money and two, they have to have a higher mortgage payment and wage growth is not kept up. So the people's, you know, wages have not kept up to the way they, the mortgage payments have jumped in, you know, $700, $1,000 a month more for the same kinds of houses. So, um, you know, there's, you know, that's pushing people into the rental housing and the other <laughs> side of that, we're already undersupplied. I mean, if you look at the numbers, you, you know, we, the last 10 years have not really kept up from a construction side, maybe in the last three or four years they have, but prior to that, they didn't. So we have a huge glut, a huge need for housing, but it costs a lot. The interest rate to build housing is a lot. The land costs are high still. So all this needs to correct to your point, the, the asset bubble needs to, needs to deflate. And then once it deflates, then people will come in and, and start to do deals again. Okay. So looking into what, what do you see in 2023? So right now, you know, the fed threatens everybody and the fed, by the way, is basically a fascist organization because it's a private institution managing a public property, the Federal Reserve Bank. That's that's a definite fascism. And that's why most people like Rand Paul and all that end the Fed and all this, because all they do is they make their friends richer. That's their job. So my concern in here is this. What do you see if they keep raising interest rates then eventually they're going to have to print more money for social cost, you know, like homelessness and all the other things that the socialists, the equality guys love. Do you see the same thing? They're going to have to increase spending on the people who, who are losers caused by the Fed? Yes, without a doubt. We're already seeing rent control. We're seeing rent caps. We're seeing policies passed. Um, you know, all kinds of cities and counties and states are discussing this. And so, you know, I, I, it's interesting. I was talking to the head of capital markets at a very big company, you know, one of the guys that we use and here, I said, well, where are you guys investing? Now th this is debt and equity at the highest level. He said, 
We're staying away from the coasts, except for Florida. And we're focusing on the inside. And basically, he said, any, you know, why would you invest in Oregon when Oregon says we're going to cap your rent and we're going to bump and we're going to raise your property wow. taxes? You know, and so so the financial markets are really taking note of these political decision making, you know, and, and you know, I'm not trying to be political here. I'm just saying that if, right. if you're if you're going to, you know, money goes where it's treated best. And so, you know, if if you're not going to invest in St. Paul, Minnesota, because they inv- they put a three percent rent cap on there, even though, by the way, it might be needed for the renter base. But the money is going to stop flowing there and it's going to move somewhere else. And so that's what's happening now. Would you explain what rent control is on all that? Sure. Yeah. So a state basically controls how much you can raise your rent. And um, that's it. So if you're a landlord, they can cap, you know, your increases. Wow. Again, that's socialism or fascism again. And by the way, I'm getting the wrap up signal just to let you know, Robert, from Sarah. Okay, because you got my seat. That's why. So anyway, you know, um, again, there's good news and bad news about money. Kenny has three books. If you're going to get into this market, I would say you have to be a lot smarter because from 2008 to 2022, you could be an idiot and make money. But this time, everything has changed. We've never, our debt is this high. Our interest rates are going this way and the social unrest or social problems will increase. So Kenny has three books, the ABCs of real estate. They still hold true. The ABCs of property management still hold true. And your third book is on how you finance things, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. There, I mean, it's really a, you know, it's a great series to, if you want to buy something, start small. We always say start small, you right. make sure it cash flows and make sure it's well prop, uh, managed by yeah. property management. In other words, today you can get, you can still do well in real estate, but you have to be a lot smarter than 2008. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And th- this is where all the money is going to be made too, Robert. You, you Correct. see, it's what we did in 08, 9, 10. That's what really took us, you know, 10x, yeah. you know, for sure. Yeah. In 2008, we were licking our chops saying, oh man, this is our time. Yeah. This is our time. So anyway, I want to thank you, Kenny, and for all the years we've worked together on this whole thing. And I've made, Kenny has made Kim and I multi, 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 multi million years there over. But another advantage of real estate is you don't pay taxes, which is a whole nother advantage. So please get steady. And, you know, thanks, Kenny, for being a great teacher. Yeah. yeah, thank you. It's great to be on the show. And as always, uh, congrats on the home office. Yeah, this is my inaugural program with the rich, from my home office from my home in Phoenix, Arizona. So everybody, think, take care, and we'll be right back with the final word. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. And boy, it's a lot of bad news, but if you're smart, it could be very good news because when something comes down something goes up that's the law of physics there so i want to thank ken malcroy has been our partner for many many years we have made you know we call each other billionaires because we're a billion dollars in debt because kenny knows how to take debt and turn it into cash flow and the more debt you use the lower taxes you pay so you've really got to be smarter and you can't be stupid today so I would get Kenny's books, you know, the ABCs of real estate uh, property management, as well as the advanced guide to real estate investing. So Sarah, what are your final words on this, our program with Kenny and my inaugural program from my home office here? In well, you Scotland. look good and <clears throat> yeah. so thankful that we got that set up. So, you know, we have some kinks to work out, but I'm so thankful that you're able to do this from home. Yeah. Um, I really appreciate Ken's time. He has a, he has a, a plethora of experience, right? From starting small to what, you know, the, the billions of dollars he's in now. So he is really the true expert, right? We talk about find the right teachers. He has the years of of experience and knowledge to back up what he says. So, yep. so appreciative of his time. And, and, he, has a, and he has a team. Absolutely. And his Absolutely. partner is a finance guy, Scott yeah. McAllister. Right. Ross and, McAllister, excuse me. Ross, yeah. So... I think the big takeaway for me, so we all know I bought my two properties last year. 
short-term rental through the summer. Um, obviously we're on a lake. So <laughs> in Indiana, the lake's frozen in the winter. Um, so I was in a unique situation where I had to find renters through the winter. Um, how am I, you know, how am I going to maintain that, that, uh, income? And we, and I don't want to say this because I don't want people to take this out of context, but we got lucky. We, um, listed our property on a traveling nurse site. So traveling nurses go all around the country. They work in hospitals for, you know, 96 months. And we filled both properties over the winter with traveling nurses. Thank God. Right. Because, yeah. because I had that same, like, you know, the market has changed for one, people aren't going on vacation and they're certainly not going to go on vacation in Northern Indiana in the winter. Um, so that was just, I just, and I, the reason why I'm pointing it out is because you have to get creative. You have to think, where are the renters? How can I attract renters to my property? And I think, you know, so, so as we head into tougher times, as, as Ken says, next year is not going to be any better. So what can you do as a landlord or as a property owner um, to get creative and to make sure that your property cash flows as you expected as we go into this kind of like crazy time? So anyways, a great show. I'm so happy to kick off 2023 with this type of show, kind of a big overarching view. We gave great tips um, or lessons. And the number one lesson is to get educated. Correct. And And starting out. And a big part is don't trust anybody under 30 because all they've known is an up market. Yep. And if you want to be successful, you'd better find some old guys like me who've had, who've had the crap kicked out of ourselves. You know, we don't, we're not here because we're the smartest guys on earth, but what Sarah's getting right now is called experience. And that experience is priceless. Even if you get your butt kicked, Sarah, it's going to be the best experience ever. Yeah. But you don't have to have that experience if you can avoid it. I'd prefer not to, but I, you know, I feel like studying now, even though I'm in the in real estate, studying now, getting my hands on as much information about what's happening yeah. and what I can do and maybe what trends are out there that I can watch to st- try to stay ahead of the game. I just want to protect myself as much as I can, knowing full well that a good butt kicking is probably around the corner, but yeah. I, I'd prefer not to. So I think that's the lesson. Um, you know, just get educated as much as you can and continue that education. Well, be, be careful who your teacher is. Mm-hmm. Do, do you know what I mean? Is that I meet so many young guys now, like I won't mention the person's name, but they dropped out of school and bought a condo, which I don't like condos because of the pro- because of the management fees. And then he puts it in Airbnb and it's 200 miles from his house. That's all the mistakes that, you guys make, yeah. you know, real estate, your first buy should would be within 30 miles because you'll always have problems with real estate because of property management. Mm-hmm. So I would strongly advise the younger. And then plus, if you have financing, you know, like an SBA loan and all that, you're in serious trouble. The moment you take out a loan, you basically have bought a security and you default on that. They'll destroy your life forever. Mm-hmm. So that's why when I talk to younger people, I was studying Kenny's book, especially the Advanced Guide to Real Estate Financing, because financing is a key. So is property management. And so is the basics of it, because they're all the same, whether it was real estate or a business, it's all the same. So I wouldn't trust anybody under 30 right now. I would find an old guy who's got his butt kicked a number of times and run your ideas past them. You know, that's that's why I had my rich dad. I asked my poor dad, you know, a PhD in education. He knew nothing. Why would you trust a stupid school teacher just because they have a PhD? You know, I want somebody who's had their butt kicked around the block a number of times. And, you know, you got to take their advice with a grain of salt. I would ask, I would ask the old guys, what were your biggest mistakes you made? Because school teachers, when it comes to property and stuff like that, they don't make mistakes. That's why they're poor. If you don't make mistakes, you don't get any experience. (laughs) <laughs> Without experience, you're fucking book smart, right, Sarah? That's right. You're not. You're not. You're not book smart anymore, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> you're now frozen like smart. <laughs> yeah, I just appreciate this show and your time, and I'm so glad you're able to do this. And uh, what a looking forward to 2023 for sure. Yeah, 2023 is going to be exciting because we're going to make even more money, right, Sarah? I hope so. 
This is a, a now it's no hope, man. Either you will or you won't. <laughs> hope is for hopeless people. You know? You it's okay to prayer, be a prayer and I'll meditate and all that other stuff that people do. Yeah. But hope is for hopeless people. Again, thank you. Thank you everybody for listening to the Rich Dad Radio program. Twenty twenty three is gonna be a fantastic year if you have real world experience, education and know the fundamentals. Thank you very much. Bye. Yeah.